thanks for checking out the second week update of our Save the 120 series. We're going to take a tour of all the hair algae again, see what the first week of dosing Vibrant accomplished, and make sure you watch to the end because we had some crazy stuff happen with the clownfish too. Welcome back to Hacker's Reef. As you can see, we still have a bunch of hair algae in the tank. It looks like Vibrant didn't have much of an effect on that at all, but a strange side effect is the glass is extremely clear except for a few spots. I tried not to clean the glass as much as possible the first week just so you can get an idea of what it did to the algae. I noticed a similar effect when I started using bio pellets way back when. Um, we can look at these little spots over here. They're pretty dense, but all in all, the glass is relatively clear. Now, looking at the water parameters, we can see a bit of the story. The phosphates shot up and just about doubled. Nitrates doubled, but two parts per million is really acceptable on a tank like this. Even the alkalinity jumped up a bit, which is telling me I'm gonna need to step my dosing back a little. I'm thinking the reason the water parameters jumped like that was because I took out the uh, algae scrubber that we were running and connected to the basement sump. It was a fairly large and well-lit do-it-yourself build. Um, it was to the point where it was so successful that I took the skimmer offline. I think what really got me into trouble was I wasn't cleaning the algae scrubber as much as I should have, and that just goes to show that if you don't keep up on maintenance, any system could fail you. So bringing the protein skimmer back online, it had a short break-in period, but it's skimming out some really bubbly stuff. Uh, definitely stripping some things out of the water, so that's a good sign. I just think the bottom line is after taking that algae scrubber offline because Vibrant would have spent a lot of time attacking it, anytime you switch your main nutrient export system, there's going to be a bit of recalibration in your tank before it settles out and everything goes back to normal anyway. Combined with the algae die-off that's obviously happening looking at the clear glass, I think a water change is going to be in order to kind of get the parameters back under control. Now I normally don't do water changes on this tank unless something major happens like this. So we're going to go with like a 25 gallon change later on in the video. We'll show you how that went. But let's just take a look at this algae and see what happened after the first week. It's still ridiculously thick. If anything, I think it might have grown more. Uh, you can see this frag tile even has a little bit trying to grow on the zoanthid. It looks like that spike in phosphates really caused a lot of problems and the hair algae is starting to expand in weird little places like on that frag tile. Uh, I think that's why I'm going to go with the water change instead of adding more chemicals to the mix because sometimes it's better to just go simple. There's definitely a few things in the toolkit we could use, but let's stick to just the Vibrant for now and check the next spot. It's really grungy over here, kind of the same thing we expected to find uh, with the hair algae not backing down much. We're even getting a little bit of funkiness in the sand, and again you can see a better shot of that frag tile. It's on the top and the bottom. You can see that even though that zoanthid's open, it's still not super happy, and I really think that's because it's getting too much light from the LED. That's why I want to go with a diffuser or some sort of blocker just to limit the par. We'll get a good look at all the coral frags that are over there, just so we can compare what happens after I spend a week with limiting the light on them. Even though all of those frags came out of my frag tank system that does have the same LED light, it doesn't have as much white as this tank does, so maybe that's the problem, but really all tanks are a little different. And that's why it's important to not just assume and um, just kind of test your coral and make sure you get the right parameters, the right lighting, and everything like that, because you don't want to just assume, then you can get yourself into a bad situation. I like to start all my frags on the sand bed, but as you can see, my guilty looking uh, hippo tang over there, he was flipping them over almost nightly trying to bury them in the sand. I had no choice but to glue them down. So rather than glue them to some random place, I just kind of put them over there where they are now. Um, I, I just kind of hope that they would have worked out better than they did. But I think we can still overcome any problems by using the diffuser like I said. I know I keep throwing around the word diffuser and that can be almost anything you have around the house. that will just kind of block or limit the light. I'm actually using this little black tray that we use over here to uh, soak our seaweed in before we feed the tangs. But almost anything will work, even something super simple like a styrofoam plate or whatever you can really have around the house that's going to limit some light passing through it. Obviously the best thing to do is just turn down the intensity of your lights if you have that option. But you might end up like me where you have something on top of the frags that needs a lot of par. 
and that's the ideal situation for a diffuser. You can kind of just move it away or um, just like expose it to a little more light slowly until they get acclimated and they stop closing up like this. See over here, the mushrooms are as invasive as ever, basically just striving to take over the world. They could care less about this big tuff of algae right in the middle of them. Um, even the button polyps, they're starting to come back a little. So like I said, the coral's looking good. We have that little cluster right over here. Um, that, like I said, it, it tends to fight with the mushrooms. I clear the mushrooms out every now and again. It's basically a constant turf war for the rock between these two, but I'm just happy that the hair algae didn't expand too much from that phosphate explosion. Either way, it looks like the vibrant had no negative impact on the coral yet, so we can be thankful for that. Granted, there's not a lot of crazy sensitive coral, but still, nothing bad happened so far. Well, now we have some more of the tank to look at, and we still have that crazy clownfish action later on in the video. This is the rock that's um, on the other side of the tank, about the, probably I'd say like the back side of where the clownfish live, and you can see the hair algae here is still extremely dominant, covering up those polyps. I mean, it's really worked into a lot of the rocks. It's got these nice tufts with, I imagine, really strong roots that we're going to check out. The other thing to note is that you can see there's a good amount of flow just looking at how the hair algae moves from the wave maker. While there's still a few micro dead spots here and there, um, we do get some really good water movement. I think some manual removal is going to be in order because for a bunch of different reasons, just hoping that it all dies off and vanishes is really unrealistic. Even as we check out this other angle where you can see the uh, Monty Cap frag, it's doing pretty decent, but it's just overlooking this huge, just pile of hair algae below it. Having all that turn white and die off, releasing everything trapped inside and in the water, is just a recipe for disaster. So no matter what miracle product you're using, you're still going to need to get in there and put some work in. Right below us, we have the clownfish, and uh, if you overlook that hideous scratch in the glass, they're over there cleaning up because they're about to lay some eggs. Somehow they must have got the memo that uh, dosing the tank with Vibrant, doing a lot of manual algae removal and um, water changes, all this happy stuff that I'm doing was a good time to lay eggs. I don't know. They do their own thing. Um, I've never actually had any eggs from them before. I mean, I assume they've laid them. I've just never seen them. So this is going to be a learning experience for everybody. Make sure you follow us on Instagram if you're not already doing that because that's where we're going to post most of the updates to follow along and see how these eggs actually end up doing. But let's keep this update about the hair algae rolling on. And this is the last side of the tank. Uh, again, as I said, I haven't cleaned the glass at all. It's fairly clear, but you can see it's definitely dirtier than the other sides. I imagine that's because there's not as much flow coming on this side. Normally, you'd see a nice thick film algae across all of the glass, but as I said before, uh, the hair algae is not really being affected, but the film algae definitely is. So that's looking pretty good. I'm actually just going to get the flipper over here and scrape off some of this so you can see. It's hard to tell how bad it is uh, during the video over here just because of the way the camera's focused, but once I start scraping it, you're going to really see a difference. That's not a paid plug for Flipper or anything like that. I just own this personally and I really like using it. I find it's way more effective than just the classic mag scrubber alone that has that Velcro type material on it. The blade is just way more useful for getting the algae off. There's going to be some things that it can't get that you need to get in there with the uh, manual hand scraper, but that's few and far between. This thing will even take off coralline algae most of the time. The film algae over here wasn't ridiculously thick, but it was definitely thick enough that you can see now that I've cleaned it, it almost looks like the tint is gone off of the hair algae. That's going to let me get into this really nice close-up shot of that tough of hair algae we were looking at. Now, this is um, where those button polyps were and the hair algae just engulfed them. I know I sound like a broken record, but you have to give these guys some points for being really durable because even though they're completely covered, they're still trying to poke through and uh, hey, I guess they're going to get their wish. I'm going to bail them out when I do the manual removal. That's where we're going to jump to next. I'm not going to show you how I do all the water change stuff because a lot of people that have really good videos about that. Uh, maybe I'll show you how I do it in the future, but for now, just basically I went in there, I yanked out whatever I could that was uh, not super stuck into the rocks. You can drive yourself insane trying to pull out every last strand of it, so just get the things that aren't going to like lift up the rock work as you pull them. And then here we go with the miracle of video editing. This is uh, right after I've done the changeover of about 25 gallons of water. 
I went a little overboard myself and used a soft bristle toothbrush to kind of scrub at some of the rocks that were annoying me. But I didn't go insane on a mission to take off every strand like I just told you. I kind of followed my own rule of if it pulls up the rock work, then it's in really firm. You want the stuff that's going to yank out relatively easily. If you can get a good grip and pull a big chunk, that's going to help you. But you don't want to cause a giant avalanche while you're just trying to dig for all the hair algae you can get. You'll also notice there's a lot of it floating around the tank. Now, you can go along and try to catch that with a net, but I run two large filter socks in my sump, and I'm hoping that that's going to catch most of it as my power head shreds it up a bit. Looking back over at the clownfish's lair, uh, they're back to cleaning everything up over there. They don't seem very phased. They spent most of the time trying to rip my arm off because when they're this close to laying eggs, they get very territorial. There's never a time when I reach my hand and they don't go straight to attack me, but when they're about to lay eggs like this, it's really, really bad. So we better give them some privacy before they cut another X-shaped scratch into my tank telling me to back off. Now that we're over on the other side of the tank, you can see this is right where we were with the giant tuft of hair algae that was engulfing those polyps. I wasn't able to pull out as much as I'd like because of the, uh, the just way it was entangled with the polyps, so I didn't want to damage them. I think I'm just going to have to come back and see. Maybe the vibrant will knock it out more that it's really uh, smaller. I don't think it's very realistic, as I said, to expect uh, this to just vanish without manual removal, so I don't think this is going to be the last time we have to pull hair algae out. It just really depends on how well the vibrant works to uh, slow down its growth or maybe make it retract. This was another spot where we had to take out a huge amount of the algae that was just really entrenched inside of the coral. It's always tough trying to clear out something like that when it's deep in the coral because you kind of have to trade off cleaning it versus making the coral very angry at you. This coral being as durable as it is, that wasn't too much of a concern. That's why I pulled out most of it, but I didn't go really in there and get every single scrap of it. You can see it's really whipping around the tank now. Uh, let me show you what we actually pulled out of the tank. This right here is one of my uh, super handy yogurt cups that I like to use for just about everything. While there is some water in there, that's really dense with the algae. And that just illustrates the point I was trying to make earlier, that expecting that to just die and vanish inside your system after breaking down... It's just going to cause you tons and tons of headaches. You can just look at that cup full of algae and just imagine how much nutrients are bound in that and how much better your tank's going to be once you actually throw that away. Well, that wraps up our second week update of using Vibrant. I, I'm kind of torn with the Vibrant. I'm not sure. I'm going to give it more time. We're definitely going to do some more updates with the Vibrant. And I know some people are going to think that I didn't give it a good shot because I changed out some water a couple of days after dosing it. But they usually say to add it after you do a water change on your weekly maintenance. So that has me wondering if the magic bullet actually is something in that bottle of Vibrant or it's just doing the weekly maintenance that's going to get that tank looking great. I'm still going to continue the dosing of Vibrant just because you can tell it's actually doing something looking at the glass and how much the uh, film algae has cleared up. Maybe we just need to give it more time to work up the food chain and get to the hair algae and the algae we can actually see. Well, that wraps up this second episode on our Save the 120 series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see in future updates, and we'll do our best to get it in there. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss out on any future updates. And make sure you check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for even more micro-updates.